Today, we'll be creating this animation. But before you click away, just hear me out. We're actually going to be learning how to use the shader to RGB node in Eevee to separate out the material into two parts, one where there's light falling and one which is present within its own shadow or areas where there isn't any light falling on it. Then we're going to be treating them separately to create this animation. It's actually a very useful tutorial that you might use in various situations. So I really hope this one helps you out and you watch till the end. And with that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and delete the default cube and press shift A and search for a UV sphere. The actual idea of this tutorial came from one of my subscribers who watched this video over here and got an idea for an application for the is shadow ray. However, the specific use case wasn't working out. So this is just an alternative method to create it. So with the sphere selected, we'll go ahead and press object and choose shade smooth to make it nice and smooth. And if you switch over to your viewport shading of render, you'll be able to see that this sphere has areas that are lit by this lamp and areas that are dark. So if you move the lamp around, you can essentially get some areas that are brighter than the others. Now we essentially want the darker areas that isn't getting this light to be a different color. The way we're going to do that is purely using shader nodes. So let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this window from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then with the sphere selected, we'll go ahead and select our default material. We'll call this Toon Shadows and we'll start playing around with the shader. The first thing that we'll do is shift this principal PSTF to the side and search for a shader to RGB node. Now this particular node is present only in Eevee, but it's actually very useful because now we have the color values of the shader that has been evaluated based on the position of this particular light. We can manipulate them afterwards. So let's press shift A and search for a separate color node and switch this from RGB to HSV. Now HSV stands for hue, saturation and value and value is essentially this particular slider that we have over here. So we can say that if there's light falling on a region, the value is going to be high. And if it's dark, the value is going to be low. So by keeping a fairly low value, we will be getting the areas that are not receiving light. So let's take this color and plug it in and compare the value with some number. So let's press shift A and search for a math node and change this from add to less than. So if the value is less than some threshold value, in that case, we want to change the color. So to change color, you can search for a mix color node, plug that in right here and change the type from mix to color. That way, the white areas from socket A will turn into whatever color we give in socket B. And the factor will be determined based on this value over here. So let's plug this into the value and change socket B to maybe a bluish color. So now you can see that wherever the light is present, we get the normal principled PSDF itself, but the shadow regions become blue. Now you can play around with this threshold value to change exactly which areas are affected, but maybe a threshold of 0.1 is causing it to be exactly at that edge. We can take this light and move the light around and this also follows. However, there's still an issue with this and that is the fact that this edge is far too sharp. I don't want it to be this sharp. I want it to be a nice smooth fall off. So for that, let's actually change this threshold from 0.1 to a range of values. And we can actually do that using a white noise node. So let's press shift and search for a white noise texture. And then with the node wrangler enabled, press control T to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then we'll switch from generated to object and use this to control the threshold for the less than node. But obviously we don't want it to just be pure white noise. We want it to be this threshold mixed in with this white noise. So let's press shift A and search for a mix node. And we're going to keep it at float itself because we want to mix in a value and get a result between zero to one. So let's take this value, plug it into socket B and have the first socket at the threshold that we wanted, which was maybe 0.1. And now we're essentially mixing in 0.1 with some white noise texture. And that is what we'll use as the threshold. Now you can see we do get a nice gradient. You can start increasing or decreasing the factor according to your requirements. And you can also change this value based on what's suiting your scene even more. But I think I'll keep it at 0.1 with a factor of one as well to make it as smooth of a fall off as possible. Now, when we take our light and move it around, we get this this sort of a movement, which is pretty cool. The next thing that I want is some sort of an outline so that there's some differentiation from the background. So to create that, I'm simply going to add in a black border using a Fresnel node or a layer weight node. So let's press shift A and search for another mix color node, plug that in after this. And this time, instead of mix, we're going to keep it at multiply so that essentially the edges become even darker. For this socket B, we'll press shift A and search for a layer weight node. And then we'll take this Fresnel value, plug it into socket B and change the factor all the way to one. Now, of course, this is not what we want. So let's press shift A and search for a color ramp node, plug that in right in the center. And if you actually control shift click the color ramp, 
you should be able to preview the node and you see we want only the edges to be black and everything else to be white right now it's pretty much the opposite so let's flip the color ramp by dragging this to the side and taking this slider and bringing it all the way back there and then just moving this out like that and that way you get this nice border if you feel like the border is clearly too low of a resolution and you can see these edges very clearly you can always add in a subdivision surface modifier by going to the modifier properties and pressing add modifier and choosing subdivision surface that way it'll become much smoother you can apply it if you want you don't have to it's up to you if you switch off overlays this is what you have let's take this color plug it into socket b and take this result and plug it into the surface now you can take the light and just grab it around and see the movement exactly how you feel like the best part about this is if we actually take this light and move it closer the area of influence decreases so you get a smaller radius so that way you get this really cool effect that i actually like which is why i created this particular animation now of course it doesn't look too great if you can't see what this eyeball is following so let's create Create something for this eyeball to follow. So let's press shift S and choose cursor to selected so that the cursor appears exactly where the light is and there we can press shift A and add in a UV sphere. Now we can scale the UV sphere down to a very small value and then adding a new material by going to the material properties and pressing this to add in a new material. Now we'll change the base color to a complete black but I don't want there to be any shadows formed by this object so let's go to the shadow mode and change it to none. That way there will be no shadows formed and it won't obstruct the light. Then we can simply parent the light to this sphere so that whenever we move the sphere it'll appear like this white region is following the sphere. So let's select the light, control select the sphere and then press control P set parent to object. So now we can just take this sphere and move it around and the light follows. Remember if you want this region to not just be white but be a different color you could do that very easily by selecting this and just like before duplicating this color node, duplicating this less than node as well and this time taking the same value but instead of keeping it at less than you can change it to greater than and then use this same result plug this value into the factor of this next color node and change this to whichever color you want so now if you select the sphere and move it around you get this sort of an effect which i think is just really cool and i really love it the next thing that i'm going to do is just select the sphere and choose object set shade smooth and because the light is present with the sphere there's this really nice rim light effect for the sphere if you don't want that you can actually select the light and just grab it on the y-axis till it no longer causes that rim light effect but i'm going to keep it just as is next we're going to have to deal with the world background so let's switch from object to world and you see there's a slight issue over here if we were to just take this world background and make it bright everything will start taking on those yellow values that we created because it's being lit by the world background and that value is being used in the shader to RGB node. So in order to prevent that, we're going to be using the light path node. We'll press shift A and search for a mix shader. Plug that in right here. We'll duplicate the background node. We'll change this background all the way to white. We'll press shift A and search for a light path node. Choose the is camera ray option and plug that into the factor and take this second background node and plug that into the second shader. So if the light is coming to the camera, we will get this white value. But to light up the rest of the scene, it'll be getting this grayish value. Now, if you take this gray value and bring it down all the way to black, then you won't be able to see the blue colors that we created because there's no light lighting it up at all. So make sure that you still keep it at a slight value based on your requirements. Next, just to help with the tune shading feel, we'll go to our render properties, we'll go down to color management and we'll change the view transform from filmic to standard so that the whites become an actual white. Then to set up our camera, we'll select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll press zero to go into our camera view, followed by G Z to just move it up and then G Y to move it back. To make sure that you centralize the nodes, you can actually go to the camera properties, expand viewport display, increase passport out all the way to one, expand composition guides and choose center. So that way you can actually see where the center is. Then with the camera selected, you can press G twice to just centralize everything. Once you're happy with that, to actually create the animation, you can set your animation defaults by going to the output property, changing the frame rate to 30 frames per second or how much ever you want it to be. End frame, I'm going to keep 150 so that it's a five second long loop. Output folder, I'm going to choose wherever I want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video and Coding, I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG-4 and output quality, I'm going to choose Perceptually Lossless. Then I'm going to expand this timeline a bit and choose Auto Keying. Then with the sphere selected, I'll press the space bar to start the animation and then press G and just move it around in some way that I like. And once I'm done moving it around, I'll just right click so that it snaps back to the center. But I'll give it a little bit of time before I do that so that I can smoothen out the frames so that it goes back smoothly to the center to create the perfect loop.
So now let's just take this first keyframe, tap X to delete the keyframes. Let's select this one, press Shift D and bring it over to the side. Take this, bring it here, but also press Shift D and create another duplicate here. Then tap A to select everything. Switch over from the timeline to the graph editor, expand it, press Alt Shift O to sample keyframes and then press Alt O to smoothen them out quite a bit. And now you can actually watch your animation play. So I think that looks pretty cool. And that is what I'm going to be using for the entire loop. Of course, there are other ways to make it loop. There are many other things that you could have done, such as created a path and then gotten this object to move along the path. But I think this was another method that was not done too much on my channel before. So I think it's worth mentioning. Although I finished recording and exporting it once, I had to show you how to do it with cycles as well. So in case you want to do it with cycles, you can go ahead and change your render engine from EV to cycles and then delete the default cube and press shift A and search for the UV sphere. Now I'm going to add in a subdivision surface of level 2 by pressing ctrl 2 and then pressing GZ to just bring it up like before. Now to actually see the changes, I'm going to change my viewport display, have the max samples down all the way to 3 and I'm going to switch on denoising. Then I'm going to switch over to the rendered view so that we can see where the light source is and where our cube is. Now, of course, this cube might not be shaded smooth. So let's make sure we check shade smooth. Once you have that done, press Shift D to actually duplicate the cube. And we're going to be adding in the material to this new duplicated cube. Now, to prevent any overlap, we'll just press S1.001 to move it up or scale it up by a very tiny amount. Now, we'll Bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this to the shader editor. And then we'll press this plus button to add in a new material for that second sphere. Now for the second sphere, just like what we did in the light path node, we're going to press shift A and search for a mix shader. Now this mix shader is going to have the second shader as a transparent shader and the first shader was also going to be changed to a transparent shader. So let's delete the principal BSDF and then select the transparent BSDF, press Shift D, and then take this output and plug it in right there. For the factor, we're going to be using a light path node itself, but we're not going to be using the is shadow ray. Instead, we're going to be using the is reflection ray or the is diffuse ray. Both of them will work. You might have to choose one or the other based on your scene. But if you do this and then change the second shader to whatever you want it to be, so let's go with this blue, you can see that the areas that do not get the light will turn blue. So you can take this light and just grab it and move it around and you can see how the shader is going to follow along wherever the light is. If you want to change the main color of the sphere, you can add in a new material for the sphere itself and change the base color accordingly. But remember, if you change this base color too much, the shadow portion is also going to change because essentially we are adding in a blue filter on top of the base color. If the base color is yellow and the filter is blue, we're going to get greenish looking colors over here. So you're going to have to change this color accordingly to make sure that you get the correct output color that you want. So that might not be possible for all cases, but I guess this is the best I could come up with for using cycles as well. If you want to mix this up and make this much softer as well, you could do that in a similar manner as we did for the EV shader, but I'm going to leave all of that up to you. And with that, let's get back to the ending of my original video. And with that, if you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a fun one and informative to all of you. And maybe it'll incentivize more people to start using this shader to RGB node as well. There are many other cool effects that you could do with this node. And I really can't wait to see all the creative ideas all of you come up with. If you liked this one, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day. And until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.